Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today I'm test driving the 2016 Lexus IS200T, the new base model. Now that's significant because this car always had a V6 as a base engine. In fact, it's something that Lexus used to brag about. Their competition had four cylinders. They always had a standard six. Well, now they've joined the four cylinder club. So my question here today, having driven the IS many times and been very impressed with it is, is this new four cylinder just as refined as the V6 and is it just as fun? Before we get back out on the road, I want to walk you around the IS200T a little bit and show you what we've got here. The first thing that's nice about this new entry level rear wheel drive sport sedan is that they offer most of the same options and option packages you can get with its big brother, the IS350. On this car, that means the F Sport package, which gives you bigger 18 inch wheels, wider tires, and the more aggressive bodywork front and rear that really makes this car look as mean as the top dog models. This is notable because other brands keep you in your cheap seats on the base models. And even a few years after its introduction, I think this car still looks fresh with its artistic lines and origami style crease work. Out back, even with the four cylinder engine, it still has dual exhaust outlets, which is a nice touch. And for 2016, it has revised LED tail lamps. The interior is largely the same as in previous years. With the F Sport package came some very nice sport seats wrapped in leather. They're heated and cooled up front and comfortable enough to sit in all day long. They're firm and they hold you tight, but not to the point of being over the top. The center stack is clean and simple with the information screen up high, hard controls for HVAC and basic audio easy to reach, and a high center console with a nicely located shifter and drive mode knob. The TFT digital display instrument cluster is simple too, highly customizable with various information sets. You can also slide the center ring over for a different take on things, a bone thrown us from the LFA supercar. And on our tester we had the optional F-Sport steering wheel with paddle shifters for the 8-speed automatic transmission. Rear seat passengers will know they're in the smaller of the Lexus sedans, but it remains a comfortable place to be except perhaps for three. Those rear seats do fold down in a 60-40 split as well for long items from the trunk. The trunk itself is of reasonable size for this class with a low lift over height to get things in. And under its floor is a spare tire which always wins points with me over a can of Fix-A-Flat and an air pump like many of the cars are giving us now. I've always loved the interior of the IS ever since it first came on the market. It just it's well put together. I like the design. It's very business-like. There's not a lot of fakery going on here. The materials are genuine. Over here I've got aluminum, which is the real deal. And when there's wood in this car, it's real wood. Now there is one thing I'm gonna pick on, and if you watch my videos, you know I pick on it every single time I do a review on this car, and that is this tiny little screen up here in a big screen space. It's just one of those things that it's not not a big deal it's not a deal breaker if I was buying the car it's just it's a design thing I'm just it bugs me okay I mean you look at it you can clearly see that there's space for a big screen and it was designed for a big screen but they put a small one there it's like it's like they cheaped out or something and today three or four years now that we're into the model run of this car I think that what's more critical now outside the design issue is the fact that a lot of competitors now are offering larger screens and so it's easier to see when it's that far away some of them even have two screens here like Acura so um, at this point I think it's becoming a competitive thing but all of that said I do want to point out that this right here this puck makes this one of the best infotainment systems on the market in my opinion as far as being easy to use when you're on the go and that's because when you move this puck around it has tactile clicks that you can feel here in this puck and they resist your touch and that moves around with the different menus and so when you're navigating this while you're driving those tactile clicks change with each screen and menu and so what that allows is for you to be able to use this while you're on the go and you're getting jostled around without overshooting your target. And it just makes it so much easier when you're driving and safer, I think, than some of the touch screens. And even the RC Coupe from Lexus has the same screen up here, but it uses a touch pad down here. It's just not as easy to use because when you're getting jostled around and you're driving, it can 
cause you to overshoot that menu and so this is one of the best on the market and so is this even still with that tiny little screen so when it comes to scoring things up here the interior presses almost all of my good buttons which earns it five of five stars when it comes to technology, one thing missing from this picture was the optional Mark Levinson sound system, which is always worth the money. But even still, the basic sound system wasn't bad. All in, it still earns a technology score of 5 of 5 stars. So, 2 liter engine, turbo, in a place where there used to be a V6. The question becomes, does it have power? Yes. Yes, it does. Woo. Not bad at all for a four-cylinder turbo. I am definitely breaking the law now. And it does have power, 241 horsepower to be exact, in addition to its 258 pound-feet of torque. That's a significant amount more than the old base 2.5 liter V6, which only had 200 horsepower and a meager 185 pound-feet of twist. Sadly, it doesn't come with a manual transmission, but the new 2.0-liter 4-cylinder betters the old V6's 6-speed automatic with the new 8-speed Sport Shift Auto, very much like the one found in the IS350. And the transmission really is your friend. Especially in sport mode, where it really pays attention a little bit more. This works so nicely. The nice thing about this motor when it's really cooking is you almost really can't tell it's a four-cylinder. It's quiet, it's refined, it doesn't make a racket, and it certainly isn't rough or what you might even call noisy. It would be so great if the Scion FRS had this engine. I just, I wouldn't bitch about that car anymore. This is a motor that really definitely most certainly belongs here in a higher-end sports sedan and so my takeaway here is that you're not going to be disappointed because you decided to go for the base entry-level motor this is a motor that's just as satisfying in its overall refinement and its willingness to please you as the v6 is it just doesn't have quite as much horsepower that's the only thing that's it that's the only thing you're missing and when it comes to fuel economy, it performs nicely as well. The EPA rates it at 22 MPG City, 33 MPG Highway with a 26 MPG combined rating. In my time with it, I achieved 28 MPG combined, well over what was promised. And it's even a bit more than we got with the old IS250 V6. All of this makes scoring this powertrain easy at 5 of 5 stars. My biggest question when I first started to drive this car out here on my favorite windy mountain road is, does it have better handling because it doesn't have that heavy V6? And that really isn't even fair because the V6 that's in the IS350 really isn't that heavy. But this is a lighter engine, therefore, this does have a little bit of a lighter and more flingable feel little bit more balance. It still has a bit of a push in the front, but it definitely feels a little bit less heavy, especially in the steering. So when you lay into a corner, it just feels a little bit more like it's doing what you ask and not trying to push quite as hard. Now one thing I will point out is on this F-Sport, it doesn't have the adjustable suspension that a lot of the Lexus F-Sports have. This being the entry-level model, they didn't quite dial it up that far. So the suspension on this comes one way all the time. When you do put it up in sport mode, that does change the feel of the steering, but that's the only handling aspect that you get out of dialing up that drive mode on this car. The suspension does have a little bit of skitteriness over some of the more rougher places, but for the most part, this thing keeps its composure. And the most important thing is that the skitteriness doesn't come through the steering wheel. That's really sort of the point where I go, this car is a pile. It's not doing that. The skitteriness is just kind of there over those rough patches.
The skitteriness is less a character flaw of this car as it is the simple result of a moderately firm sport suspension paired with its 35 series front and 40 series rear low profile tires. Overall, this is one of the most sharp and precise chassis in the class, earning it easily 5 of 5 stars. And that gets me to quality. By now you can tell I'm pretty impressed with this car in almost every aspect, but I've driven many cars that make me love them from behind the wheel, yet the quality leaves much to be desired. That simply isn't the case here. Fit and finish are top of the game inside and out, earning it 5 of 5 stars. And honestly folks, it's pretty rare I pass out 5 stars on quality feel, but this car just nails it here, as well as all the other categories you can measure it against its competitors. And with the charismatic engine that's here, even being that it's a four-cylinder, it just makes for a nice overall package, I think. It's just eager to please, not only in its power, but in its chassis. And that makes for a fun car. That's what makes a car fun. It's when some part of the package, some link in the chain, doesn't want to play like the rest, that the whole thing becomes a dud. And this car, is by no means a dud. Well, summing it up for the IS200T, I gotta tell you, I like it. I like it enough, in fact, that I would actually buy it myself. Therefore, it goes on my I'd buy it list for 2016, and it should be no surprise if you watch my videos, this will be the third year the Lexus IS has gone on the I'd buy it list, and that really covers all the engines available in this car. The V6, a little bit more power than this. Well, honestly, a lot more power. But this is just as refined, it's just as fun to drive. And I've owned BMW 3 Series, I've owned the C-Class Mercedes-Benz. In my opinion, this vehicle's right up there with them in terms of quality, how it feels in its solid driving persona, and the refinement. It's just, it really is neck and neck, if not exceeding those in some areas. So, um, that's why it goes on the buy it list. Now let's look at the specs for this one and see how it stacks up. Here, we're looking at about $44,000, give or take. Now this does have quite a few options on it. You can get this for under $40,000, and that would be the car that you're gonna find on the lease specials advertised in your paper, the 399s, the 499s, and quite honestly for that price, I don't think most people that get it are gonna be disappointed with the four cylinder whatsoever over the previous V6. It's got plenty of power, it's definitely sporty, and it's it's refined and the fuel economy as you can tell it's pretty good so that makes it a good value for me that makes it a five star value when you put that in with everything else we've already talked about we're at five stars for the week i'm sam haymart for test driven tv i hope you enjoyed the ride well folks if you enjoyed the test drive you just saw click on the link right here on your screen and subscribe to our youtube channel we test drive one sometimes two cars every week plus we have a new video almost every single day i love cars i love to talk about cars and so there's always something new so stay tuned